Hey everybody, welcome to the cow, Church on Wheels. I am Mark Shell. Thank you so, so very much this morning. Many of you are chiming in. Many of you allow me to, quote, pastor you, lead you. Uh, and again, I believe in a community of believers, but there are a lot of people that just need this. So I appreciate your time and thank you so much for passing these videos around. I will not hold you today. I know many of you are getting ready to go to a congregational meeting and I believe that is awesome. But I, I really had a thought uh, and, and I go, I, I study thoughts, and uh, that's how I deliver the message. And the thought I kept on having was, yes, even you, because so many people feel disqualified uh, because they know their attitude, their aptitude, uh, they, they consider what they've been through, and that they allow themselves to let that determine what they can expect and go for in life. And I, uh, oh, I don't know. It's been several weeks ago. I, I taught a message on render unto Caesar what is Caesar's over in the book of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, very familiar passage. But I thought, and, and the more, oh my God, we live in a society now. Yeah, it, it's a tree hugging. Oh my God. Uh, it, you just sometimes sit and laugh and say, what in the world is going on? You know, we, we uh, over the last few days, we've had a, a balloon from China fly across the country and finally numb nuts decided to shoot it down, uh, you know, but you can live with that. You can tolerate it. Everyone's on a different level. But then I started thinking when that balloon was coming along, well, you know, I thought, how much information does the enemy, and I'm not talking about China or another foreign country. I'm talking in the spirit world. How much information does the enemy against you have and how is it going to be used against you uh, the information is always gathered what you've done wrong what you could have done different and all that information gathers for one purpose to create a delusional attitude that you're not worthy and so I, I wanted to title today's talking about, yes, even you. You know, over in the book, I believe it is uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, when the Apostle Paul said, you know, we, we are many members, but we are one body. Can the hand say to the foot, I have no need of you? Can the ear say to the eye, I have no need of you? We need all those particular specifics to create a functioning being. And yes, even you, you may feel disqualified and the, en the enemy has gathered so much information from all your mistakes, your failures. And I see you guys chiming in. Thank you so much. And, and so when you don't realize, yes, even you, you have the right to rule in life. You have the right to be happy. You absolutely have the right to be happy. God's not pleased because you're going to heaven. He's pleased because you're happy. Holy smokes, people. Why, why would I serve a sick God that created me to send me here to see if I could live good enough to get back where I came from? 
let's smoke that one again. No, he put us here to be happy. But the problem is we see people in positions and say, well, I'll never be recognized like that. I want you to see, and God help us get this, you are so important. You are just as important as the one that is seen. You know, yeah, I've got a hand. People can see my hand and females, you may have people comment, oh, I love your manicure or I love your pedicure. I, I love, you know, they can see the functionality of that and appreciate it. But what about the other parts of the body? Because there are many members, but there's only one body. My life is not sustained by my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet. There are multiplicities of components that comprise this human body functioning. And if one thing begins to go wrong, the whole body suffers. So I, I just want to teach you very quickly this morning how important you are and you have just as much authority in the body as the one being seen. You know, we put TV preachers on a pedestal and thank God for broadcasting as long as they're teaching truth and liberty. But, you know, you see them, so you naturally boast them. You know, you can see what my hand is doing. You can see what my foot is doing. But many, many of us in the body of Christ, we are like the uvula. The uvula is, you may be thinking, okay, what's that? The uvula, I don't think I've done this. It's the punching bag in the back of your throat. How many has ever complimented on you, I love your uvula? No, it it's the unmentioned part. But do you realize if it were not for the uvula, much of the food you try to chew would go into your sinus cavities. Do you realize the saliva that your uvula creates over an adult's lifetime is enough to fill two swimming pools. And that saliva releases the chemicals in your body to keep on releasing healing. Nobody ever sees the uvula. So I, I'm just saying that short exhortation there of you are needed. And yes, even you, you may, you may feel like the uvula. You may feel like nobody sees what I'm doing, but you're so vitally necessary. Good morning, Patty. You are so vitally necessary. And so understanding that, we then go into, well, if I don't feel I'm that necessary, then my authority is diminished. No, it's not. The I has authority, the hand has authority, the foot has authority, the uvula has authority. The hand can't do what your uvula does. Your uvula cannot do what the hand does. And so understanding number one, and we need to get this, you are important. You are needed. You don't have to be congratulated or appreciated, you just function. You know when you're at the happiest time of your life, when you know what you're doing, what you're supposed to do, and you could care less 
where someone, whether someone is saying, oh, I appreciate what you're doing. If you need a congratulatory remark for what you were called to do, you are missing out on happiness. Just function, you little uvula. And let me tell all, I love your uvula, you know? You may be an appendix. You may be uh, a little toe. You may be a little finger. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. We are all one in the body and we all have the same authority. So <clears throat> when Jesus was presented with a question over in Matthew 22, uh, the Pharisees, of course, the hell raisers, they came to Jesus and said, tell us what you think. Give us your opinion. <laughs> well, I can tell you this. I've had people ask me my opinion, and boy, if they don't like it, who you know it. Because I'm a very honest person. I'm very straightforward. I don't mean to be rude, but if you ask me something, I'll tell you. And and so Jesus, he knew right then, this they're trying to trap me. And they said, uh, it's time for taxes. Should we pay the taxes or not pay the taxes? He knew it was a trick question. And so he he said, hand me one of the coins, which was a Daenerys. It was silver. He said, whose inscription is on the coin? And they said, Caesar. He said, well, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. And it threw him back because they knew if he was to say, don't pay your taxes, it's treason to Rome. But if he were to say, do pay your taxes, then it was going against the second commandment of not having any of the gods, yada, yada. So they were just trying to hammer him. But Jesus said, pay to Caesar what is Caesar's, pay to God what is God's. So what is Caesar's? Caesar is the natural world. Now watch this. You may feel like the little finger. You may feel like the uvula. You may feel like just the ear. You don't have to be the head. He is the head of the body, okay? But if you feel discounted in who you are, then you're not going to rule in the authority Jesus gave us. The word says he has given us authority both in heaven and on earth. In other words, in his world and Caesar's world. So render to Caesar what is Caesar's. What do you mean, Mark? It cost money to have to get gas, to live in a house, to buy food. It just takes money. That is Caesar's, you know? And a lot of people say, oh, you know, the only thing guaranteed is death and taxes. I don't mind paying taxes. <laughs> and I know that may sound crazy. Now, in our government right now, the idiots that spend it, that's a different story, but I pay my taxes. And I don't mind it because, watch this, I have a National Guard that will protect me in the border of my country. I have a military that will protect me when I'm abroad. I have a Coast Guard that will protect me when I'm at sea. I have a police department that I can call with three digits and they'll come protect me. I have an ambulatory service. 
I have a fire department. That's what my taxes do. I don't mind paying taxes. I, I don't mind it. I benefit. I'm not driving on dirt roads. I am driving on paved roads. I have snow plows that clean them when, when it's wintry. You, you understand that. So I'm, I'm not that pumped, you know, about, oh, I get to give money to the government. I'm just, I see the investment that, so I render to Caesar what is Caesar's, but I render to God, and I hope you guys are getting this, and I'm seeing you guys chime in, and again, I've said it before, I am wearing bifocals, but I'm, I'm thinking trifocals may be better so I can see who's doing what. Uh, I always go back and check, though. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, natural money, okay? Now, if a preacher talks about money or sex, people get turned off. Well, I've got nothing to do with either one, and that's a lot of the issue. But that's Caesar's stuff. That money is what allows you to operate in the earthly level. But understand this. Being in the body of Christ, you have authority in both worlds. You have authority in both worlds. Well, what do you mean, Mark? He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but render unto God what is God's. Well, what is God's? Well, well, his spirit is, is his. Well, yeah, but you were always his spirit. What did God give you that you can give as a gift to him if If he gives you this gift and you say, you know what, Father, I'm going to give this right back to you. What he's saying is, I gave you my spirit, but I have given you a soul. That is the gift you give back to him. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Okay? Render unto God what is God's? What is God's? The only thing he gave you. A soul. You already had a spirit. Your soul. What? Now, understand this. Your soul is comprised of three elements. Your intelligence, your reason, and your passion. Okay? So, when I give my intelligence back to him, what do you mean? When I am acquiring knowledge, how to do something, and and I, I need steps of, of not only how to do it, but how to be successful in it. My intelligence, my cleverance, uh, uh, just, you know what, Here, here's the best way to say it. Here's the way you give your intelligence back to God. Father, I've got a good idea about what I'm looking at, but I need some wisdom in this situation, how to apply the knowledge I have attained. Oh man, now you're giving unto God what is God's. He loves to lead you and guide you. So when you take that intelligence aspect and apply it to getting information and then taking it to God and say, how do I walk through this? That's your gift to God. He gives you reason. That's your, that's the second level of the soulless realm, your reasoning ability, which means your aim, your motive, your drive. Give your drive to God. It's your motive you are a member of the body of Christ. You may be an eyebrow. You may be a tooth. You may be a little toe. But let me tell you something. You are so needed. 
to realize your ability. Do you realize as much as it would like to, your different parts of the body cannot disdain one another. Oh, you're not needed. You're not needed. No, the heart can't say to the big toe, you don't even need, I, you, I don't need you. The big toe keeps your body balanced. Okay? And so every one of you are necessary. Every, you, even you, have authority in two worlds. Now, you have authority in the natural world through your money, your taxes, okay? But you have authority in the spiritual world through your intelligence, your, your reason, your motive, and, and your passion, your desire, your hunger. You're giving that back to God. I want to challenge you every day. Wake up and just say, you know what, God? I give you my soul. I give you my soul. Okay, I, God, lead me, guide me, direct me. You've given me ideas. And I want to thank you for leading me into that place of my dream. So you're giving your soul back to God. You're giving your money to Caesar, but you're giving your soul back to God. Now watch this. Now you're ruling in two worlds. But watch. Caesar wants your money. God wants your soul. So when you give your money to God, it is the slap in the face to Caesar. In other words, yeah, I pay my bills, I pay my taxes. And then I say, and you all have heard me teach many times on the law of seed, time, and harvest. And, and I stand by that. I have lived by that for, what is it, July will be 33 years of full-time ministry. That's how I've lived. If I lived on people just, hopefully they believed what I preached and gave me some money, I don't prostitute the gospel. I do not. And I, I learned this principle. When I sow what Caesar wanted, now Caesar's been paid, but I'm going to sow what Caesar requires into the kingdom of God. It's a slap in the face of Caesar. A sower of God planting what Caesar wants is the highest form of rebellion against the flesh. We've all heard of rebelling against the spirit. This is rebellion against the flesh. When you and I, as gardeners of God, sowers of God, you know, and, and I, I do apologize. There, over the years, being a preacher's kid, <clears throat> 69 years old, I have seen a lot of crap, or scabola, sorry, out there, you know, trying to raise money, trying to get money. If, if I have to send you a product to get you to sow, then you're not ruling the kingdom. And that's just my opinion. That's my attitude. But I've seen so many shenanigans, and for years... I, I didn't even want to mention money in church because I didn't want to be identified with that. And I still don't. But then I realized I have authority in two worlds. I need money in this world and I need authority in that world so I can rule in two worlds. There you go. Yes, even you. I think that was the title of today. Yes, even you. You may be the uvula. You may be the little toe. 
You may be the eye, you may be the ear, you may be the hand, but yes, even you can rule in the spirit world and in the natural world. When you take what Caesar wants and sow it to the kingdom, you are just circulating the authority. I rule in two worlds. I don't say that arrogantly, braggadociously. I say it confidently because he said, behold, I give you authority in heaven and on earth. Oh my God, when are we going to figure that out and, and stop waiting for the world to blow up? Holy Jesus, people, let's start ruling now. It's ours. He didn't make you righteous so you could go to heaven. He made you righteous so you could rule two worlds. Start ruling. Okay? So, yes, there are many members. And the flesh wants that member to be seen. But when you know you're as important as any other part of the body, then you can begin to be at peace, ruling in heaven and then in the earth. And so I, en I encourage you, every time you give, even if you go to church this morning and you give, you are slapping Caesar in the face saying, no, I rule your kingdom. And those of you that sow into this ministry, you're just slapping the enemy saying, I rule that kingdom too, you know, and I do appreciate all of your support, all of your gifts. You all are such a blessing. If you've never become a partner with Mark Shell Ministries, please go online to the website, markshellministries.com. If you have any questions about what I taught, I can answer what I taught. I don't know everything but I have studied and I know what I teach. You can email me at markshellministries at gmail.com. And anyway, I thank you guys so, so very much. I will look forward to seeing you next Sunday morning at nine o'clock. You all be blessed and thank you again for tuning in.